Welcome to the Story A Day podcast. This is Julie Duffy from storyaday.org, encouraging you to be a writer every day, not someday. Welcome to the Story A Day podcast. This is Julie Duffy, and we are back this week with the second part of my interview with award-winning novelist and short story writer, voice actor, puppeteer, and general mensch. I don't know if you can use that for a woman, but I assume you can, Mary Robinette Kowal. Last week, if you haven't listened to that one yet, go back and listen to it. We talked about her new novel, The Spare Man, and various tips and tricks around writing, research, building a world that you would like to see in your fiction, not to be missed. This week, we're talking more about the writing life and how to create a writing practice, whether or not you're the kind of person who can write every day, or whether, like most of us, you're a little less uh, routine based than that, and no matter what challenges you have in your life. And Mary Robinette gets pretty honest about some of the challenges that she faces in her life, and yet still manages to get all these wonderful books out. So it's very inspiring, very generous, a lot of fun, and starts with the question Where's my butler? Can we talk a little bit about your writing process? Because what we do at Story a Day, you know, the big challenge in May is all about just like writing like as many stories as possible. But that's not what being a, a writer is about, really. It's it's building a practice that you can sustain the rest of the year. And that's what I try and help people with the rest of the year. So since I have you here and you are an example of someone who has, you know, is having some success and working quite a lot. I imagine that like once the contract is signed and you have a book contract, the, the world just gets out of your way and makes it easy for you to write. Is that That's exactly, that yes, yes. So that's actually in my contract that I get a, a butler who comes, prepares all of my meals and someone does all of my laundry. That's, uh, you know, I get an answering service that takes care of all of my emails. That's and, encouraging. Good. Yes. Good. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, that's something that's a standard, standard contractual thing. If it's not in your contract, then there's no. So, so how reality, do you get the work done? Um, yeah. 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 So the the way I have I have ADHD and I have depression and I'm late diagnosed on both of those. As previously mentioned, I am 53 and I was diagnosed with ADHD in, when I was 50. So this is still pretty new to have words to describe what happens with my brain. Depression, I was 45 when I got that diagnosis. In hindsight, both of those have been my entire life. But what I have been working on is finding ways to work with my brain instead of against it. What I, you know, I, I say that, you know, when I'm, when I'm healthy, what I like to do is have a writing session a day where I get about 2000 words done. And, and usually that's, you know, a two, two hour block is fine for that. But there are, are so many things happening in my life and the world that the number of days in which I'm I'm like mm, I've got a good healthy brain today, the, you know those those are not as many as I would like. And what I've also realized is that when I when I'm in that state where I'm like ah two thousand words a day, that it's because I have energy to 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 compensate for everything else. Mm-hmm. And so my writing process now is to recognize that that with the ADHD brain there are three four four things that attract my brain and I think I got these from how to ADHD which is a YouTube channel but I saw it on Twitter so it's novel interesting urgent and challenging so novel is literally something new I'm interested in the thing I'm working on challenging is that this is this is I'm pushing things for myself a little bit and an urgent is, you know, there's a there's a, a time sensitivity to it. This is, you know, why you can do your dishes right before company comes and it's impossible before they get there. So recognizing that, it also made it very clear to me why NaNoWriMo works so well for me. It is literally a novel, brand new one, interesting, yeah. that I've been wanting to write. It's a challenge to get that those words done. And, and there's an urgency because end of the month is coming up. So what I have been learning to do is figure out ways to trigger that kind of hyper-focus for myself without creating crises. So what I've realized is that I used to overburden myself in order to create that sense of urgency. And I'm trying to be kinder to myself. And one of those is recognizing that not every day is a good writing day. And that that is actually 
okay, I will try to do three sentences a day to ch- kind of as a check-in with my brain. I, I also work best when I have blocked out time on my calendar that is specifically for that. Working with and blocking those out, talking to my my husband and my family about these are the days that I'm going to be writing. This is the time in which I'm writing so that they know. And also that adds a little bit of urgency for me because I have made a commitment to them and I'm inconveniencing them by saying you can't approach me during this time. Therefore, you know, I, I need to get some work done because often we're kinder to other people than we are to ourselves. Oh, so nice. so finding ways in which I can be as kind to myself as I am to other people has been a journey for the past couple of years. It's one that I will continue to be on. But it's, it, I have these kinds of conversations with people in the writing world and in my groups all yeah. the time. And it's it's that the expectations that don't fit how our creative yeah. brains, you know, whether or not we've got attention issues or or, you know, mood issues. Uh, generally yes we're always nicer to each other we put other people's tendencies first I mean that's why I start a story a day and it's why I make it I make it things that I want to get done I make them public and I put them on the calendar and I invite people to join me yeah (laughs) because that gives yeah that gives the but I think we do we do have to be so much kinder to ourselves about the the fact that we don't need to be writing every day. I love, I love the idea of the three sentence check in though, because we, yeah. you don't want to leave something so long that it goes stale or you like it's yeah. a massive mountain to climb to get back into it. Yeah, that's actually another thing I learned. A new trick that I've learned recently is the warm up or the ramp up. So I have two things, and I, I can I can give you that this to share with your listeners one is the 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 30 day writing challenge and on day 1 you write one sentence and on day 2 you write two day 3 3 4 etc and if you miss a day then you just pick up where you left off you put a star on the calendar anytime any day you write at all and and then you put another star for when you hit that number of words. So if you're on day eight, but you only managed to write six sentences, you still get to put a star on day eight and also in the day six box. Love and if you it. do get if you do get day eight done, then you get two stars on day eight. So so you know you you just plug ahead and and then by the end, I ju- I have a short story that's that I just sold to Uncanny that I I wrote that way. And it was, I had, I realized after I finished it, that it was the first new thing. It was the first thing that I had started and finished since the pandemic began. I have things that I finished, but I started them before 2020. And I have things that I started and couldn't get traction on. And, and this was like, this was the first thing I was like, oh, okay. And I got myself a little momentum. Actually, no, I think even the, yeah, I don't think, I think this may have been also the first thing that I actually started as well, but it's definitely the first thing I started and finished. I love that. I think everything else was pre-pandemic. Yeah. Big fans of stickers and 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 worksheets and stars around yeah. here, and, and that's one of the things I have this I writer acronym that I use, which so sort of breaks up the writing life into little buckets so that it's not oh, yeah. overwhelming. And one of them is T for triumph, so that the acronym works. But it's it's all about the importance of celebrating every little thing yes. that we do. It really is yeah. like it's neuroscience. We we actually do need that. We are yeah. toddlers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we absolutely are. I have a, a spreadsheet, a uh, spreadsheet that I use for tracking where I am on on the novel because which I, I started with with NaNoWriMo and and it it turns out that it's it's really super helpful for me. Actually, if you don't mind, I can share screen so people can see what it looks like. The other the other piece that I recommend is a Jeffy Kennedy has a a ramp up version of NaNoWriMo. So instead of diving in at 1666 words a day, you you start with 150 the first day. And and it ramps up so by the end of the the month you're you're doing two, 2200 words a day and it works really really well. And it's something that you could do any time of year is say, you know what? I want to I want to ramp up. I've taken a break. I need to get back in. And instead of trying to get back in at the levels that you were writing at before, just starting there, like 
ease back into it. Like you don't go to the gym and start Mm -hmm. lifting exactly the way you were before or running or any of those other sport things that people do. No, but they're hurting yourself. Analogy. Yeah. Yeah. So why not, you know, why not be gentle with your brain too? All right. So this is, here is, here is what my spreadsheet looks like. So I like it when things turn green. I have one of those as well. (laughs) Yeah. But, I learned. You know, you, I learned how to program a spreadsheet so I could make it turn green when I got to the yeah, right yeah. number. But you'll you'll notice it's like you know my my productivity goes up and down all over the place. I'm at in just under forty thousand words last night, so that means I have you know I have a big push if I want to try to hit fifty thousand by the end of this month, and I'm. And the the difference now is that I'm like, you know what, if I don't have 50,000 on the 30th, that's okay. You know, I, I won't be mad at myself if I don't do it. Am I going to push extra hard? Yes, because urgency is a drug for me. <laughs> and because you're tracking it, you can see exactly what it's going to take. Like, you know, yeah. it's not just this big overwhelming, oh, I've got so many words to write. You actually no. can see and like, what do I what do I do on an average day? What do I do on a good day? It's so useful to track yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And this particular spreadsheet will tell me, so it's like, I need to write 3,400 words a day and like, oh, <laughs> but one of the other tricks that I have is that I will, I basically Zeno's par- paradox, my way to completion. So I, I, I'm going to do two writing sessions. So, so immediately that tells me that I am splitting 3,445 words in half. So that means I have to write about 1,700 in in my my session, my first session. And that's fine. I do 1700 a time. So, but again, because I'm trying to be kind to myself, I'm like, okay, so that means that I'm going to try to write about 850 words in that first hour. And you're like, oh, I can write 850 words in an hour. And and so I, I do that and I'm like, great. Now I've got another hour and, and, you know, it's, I'm a little tired. So instead of saying, I'm going to write another 850 words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, my math, I'm actually really bad at math. So I'm amazed that probably none of these numbers are correct. So in, so what I'm going to say is I'm going to attempt to, to write right now, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write 425 words. Like that's, that's a little over page. It's like, yeah, it's two pages of writing. I can making it, making it easy enough that it would almost be ridiculous not to do it. Right. You're like, yeah. Yeah. And then and you get the then you get the the like yeah. triumph, the celebration of having yeah. met that. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and I finish that and I'm like, okay, can I keep going? Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna do another 250 words. Great. Mm-hmm. And and then then you're like, oh, I'm so close to the end. I may as well just do it now. So so that's what I mean when I, I'm like if I if I each time I say I'm gonna just I'm gonna do half of what I just did, then I'm I'm setting myself up to succeed because it is it is an amount that I know I have already succeeded at doing. Excellent. That's a great tip. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. This has been a fascinating discussion. Everybody should read the new book, The Spare Man. And just, you know, thank you so much for talking to us about your writing process. And I have been following Mary Robinette for a long time but one of the things that is so so valuable is your patreon would you like to tell people a little bit about what what you do there because one of the Absolutely. things i love is you're so generous with with your sharing your process as well as you know your it's not like you know i'll send you a short story every month you you do other stuff let's let's talk about that yeah so what i do with my patreon is i have a couple of layers one is there's a live streaming class every month so if, for you basically get access to an archive of like four years of teaching in addition to the the class each month. And then I do the interviewing experts. And that is designed both for writers and people who are not writers, but are just curious about the world and how the sausage is made. So that's the kind of upper levels. Then I, I have a, a level that's the Q&A and writing date. And once a month, I answer questions. And then after the questions, we stick around and we write. And then there's what I call the backstage door where you get access to when I when I put out a call for beta readers, That's those are the people who get to see things first. They get to see rough drafts, all sorts of other things. And then there's a Discord community called the Lady Astronaut Club. And because I, I want people to 
I, I know that not everybody can can do these things. There's also a a way to get into the Lady Astronaut Club without being a member of Patreon, and that's uh, ladyastronautclub.com and sending in a self-addressed stamped envelope. And and it's, I call it the kindest corner of the internet. But honestly, if you join the Patreon and leave the Patreon, the Lady Astronaut Club remains accessible to you. Like it is, I I, I want people to have a, a community without needing to pay for it. And it is, I will say, one of the kindest corners of the internet. Certainly a- anybody in, in this Soria Day community would feel very much at home there. So yes, I, I'm, you know, I'm in the, the monthly classes and writing dates as well. And it's just been such a wonderful both community and source of information. So I highly recommend everybody check that out if you can. Thank you. thank you for being here and good luck with the 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 sales of the spare man i hope thank that you. it's going and i hope that you're getting lots of lovely feedback from readers and it's really a, a lot of fun so thanks for coming and talking about it oh thank you so much i hope that you have enjoyed both installments of this interview with mary robinette kowal you can find her work at mary you can find the book the spare man wherever you like to buy your books and you can find mary robinette's patreon with all of its wonderful benefits at patreon.com forward slash mary robinette thanks for listening Why not come over to the blog at storyaday.org and check out this week's writing prompts and articles. And in the meantime, have a great creative week. And of course, keep writing.